Okay, we're just at a request from the CEO to bring 5.11 forward. Uh, um, I see Colin. Yeah, waiting patiently. Good to see you, Colin. Opal CBD accessibility audit. Um, and we have a we have a copy of the audit here. Good afternoon, Claire and Colin. And other members here uh, regarding this item. Afternoon, everybody. Um, before I go on any further, I'd just like to um, acknowledge Amanda Banks from CCS Disability oh, right. um, no, Action Amanda. Waikato and Steve Taylor, from, who's an accessibility audit, who actually undertook the audit for us. Oh, thanks. Nice. Um, and they've both come from Hamilton, so. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry to keep you waiting. And, oh, and, the night and, night. and also yeah. Colin, yeah. Colin from Taupo Access Group, who's um, yeah, come Colin. to support us. Um, for those of you don't, who don't know, Access Taupo Group is a, is a group made up from the community who've got mobility impairments, um, wheelchair, have wheeled, are in wheelchairs, um, mothers and fathers with pushed ears, um, age concern and um, blind and deaf people. Um, during one of their uh, meetings they actually suggested that council allocate some budget to look at doing a street accessibility audit. This was to um, basically cover Taupo, Mingakira, Tuangi and similar to the one that Waipa District Council has done recently. Um, it was decided initially to focus on the Taupo CBD only um, because that's where our greater pedestrian and urban population is and the tourists um, arrive and it would give us a greater benefit for what, what recommendations came forward. Um, CCS Disability Group was engaged to undertake the audit for us and it included Riverside Park, Tongariro Street, Spa Road, up to Kaimanawa and also along the lakefront to State Hotma, sorry, Napier Road. Um, and I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank Amanda and Steve for all their hard work in producing a well-documented report um, and also for um, developing a spreadsheet for us to monitor our actions um, in progress. Um, so the audit looked at footpaths, road and pedestrian crossings, curb ramps, um, furniture, street furniture placements, the table signs, and accessible parking spaces. From this, the recommendations identified major concerns, significant concerns, and minor concerns, all of which have been prioritised for us. Um, what we've done so far is actually review the major concerns or the major recommendations and we're actually going to work through the, within the next six months to actually do as many as we can. Um, so, so really the main thing to come from the audit is that we, um, whatever we do for the built environment for our mobility impaired pedestrians, we're going to benefit everybody, um, including tourists coming into the town, etc. And furthermore, I think it's really important that we make sure all our staff, contractors, consultants actually work towards the appropriate guidelines and standards for to make everybody healthy and, and, and safe. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Claire. Yeah, and thank you. And look, we had a um, brief look at the report and uh, certainly very, very detailed. So thank you, um, Steve and Amanda, for that. So uh, any questions of queries of clear by any chance. Chairman, just to make the point, I think a lot of the works that are needed to be done uh, are covered within the budgets we've got at the moment, just the way we go about doing things. For the major recommendations, they're actually covered within our existing um, budgets. However, the ones that we, the minor and the significant ones, will have to program into our next annual plan round or long-term plan. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cousins. Um, thank you, Claire. And thank you to the people involved in the audit. I'm just reading through here on page 91, an um, example of the practice. I suppose a bit disheartened that nothing was done for, for Turangi or I don't know about Mangakino, but we are a 50 year old town and you're a 60 year old town where you are. I'm just reading through these things here that you have in Taupo, which we don't have in Turangi. So I'm, I'm worried that the audit isn't all encompassing for all of us. The, through the chair, um, Taupo CBD was identified as the focus for the first audit. Um, and if Council see that as a success, we can work through the recommendations and we will then look at um, other street accessibility audits for touring in Mangakino. Chair, could I also make the point that as the 
district council's representative on access to our I make the point it's a district, not just Totally, totally. In Turangi, we have what's called the Turangi limp, where half people actually walk in the limp. It's a phenomenon. Um, so we are quite the no, um, It's just, I'm really conscious about the whole area being looked after. Just get out the world's smallest violin. Play it loudly. All right. And also say that, like, we've got the likes of Kinlock as well, and you know, the other. Kinlock, yeah. Yeah, great start, yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Claire. Um, Colin, did you want to add anything there? Have you read the report? Yes, I've read the report <laughs> all the way through it. and um, thoroughly agree with its findings, um, yep. particularly about the existing stage of paving. And, um, I've got to remember this isn't just for people in wheelchairs, it's, it's, we are trying to commit a bit towards being an elderly friendly town yes. as well. Yep. Um, we've had that edict from the United Nations, well not an edict but an offer from the United Nations to create a um, age friendly town and this is one of the ways to go about it, making the town accessible for everybody. Thanks. And I think the um, councils have well, just been following progress on the very road, Taripa Road pedestrian crossing as an example of the work the council's doing. I've given it a wheels test, <laughs> and uh, um, it, it's very good from what I can see on it. Oh, that's down the bottom of Tarifa. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. it's, uh, they'd have been congratulated on that one, the engineering stuff. <coughs> they're working on a very steep cross slope with that with the paving there, and they've had to the paving quite flat without going to the expense of making, the expense of cutting some things like that. It's been quite a trippy engineering, a little feat of engineering, really, miniature engineering. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that. Jim, just very quickly, as another aside, I brought it up at the meeting last week um, in regards to mobility parking and the misuse of them. New South Wales have introduced a $519 fine plus demerit points. I'm not sure whether we can change our bylaws, but it would certainly signal to those that breach that uh, they've done wrong. Because it does annoy me when I see them parked on a disability park and I can't find a sticker to say that they are. Um, very good. Okay. Thank you, Claire. Thank you. And thank you, Amanda and Steve, for coming down today. Appreciate your time and patience waiting for us. But uh, And thank you for a very detailed um, detailed report. And by the sounds of it, you'll get <laughs> a bit more, uh, obviously, Turing and Mangakino. <coughs> and obviously Kinlock, uh, Kinlock as well, because their population is starting to exceed others. So, so um, I think going forward we'll um, we'll talk about those areas as well. Okay, suggested uh, resolution there that uh, we received the report and received the information outlined, and it's good to know that you'll be able to do most of the stuff with it, existing budgets. So could I have a move, please? Moved by Councillor Hickling, seconded by Councillor Cousins. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Those against, carried.